Hello everybody and welcome to Lockdown Cooking at Home with myself Red Redfern and behind the camera my lovely wife Jane Redfern. Uh, once again welcome to all the people that have been on before and to all the new people. Uh, we run a little campsite, glamping site down here in the south of Spain called Hidden Valley Andalusia so go and check us out just uh, either on Facebook or if you google Hidden Valley Andalusia you can find out and see what we're doing down here. Obviously we're on lockdown the same as you guys are at the moment, hence doing this cooking program to bring a, bring a little bit of light relief to your day, to give you some ideas for menus for yourself and your family and for um, just putting it all together and having a bit of fun along the way. Anyway, I'm going to hand over to Jane now. She's going to run through a few hellos. Hi everybody, hello, welcome to Wednesday. Um, are you on here? Yeah. Welcome to Wednesday. Yes, it's Wednesday. I know. Difficult, isn't it? What day is it? Who am I? Anyway, um, let me just say a quick hello. Hello, Debbie. Hi, Sue from down the road. Hi, Kay Millington's watching. Hello, Kay. Um, and Sister Rach is watching. Rach, hey, chocolate, Rach. chocolate bread and butter pudding. Get chocolate that, bread and butter get pudding. Get that recipe up. over. That's coming up. <laughs> Get that recipe over. Hi, Anthony. Waz is on. Hi, hey, Waz. Waz. How you doing, mate? Uh, Dan Street is watching. Oh, hi, Dan. All the way from America. Hey, hi, Dan. How you guys. doing? Don't forget, guys. Tell us where you're from. Um, what's your name and where you're from? Okay. Hi, Ian. Hi, uh, Ian Gibbons is watching. Hi, Ian. Hope, yes. you, hope you're getting rid of the uh, water again, mate. I feel for you. <laughs> <laughs> you might know we've had quite a bit of rain here, and some of us are some of us are getting a bit flooded out. Yeah. So. Okay. Uh, um, any, no, no, you've got some um, more people. Marty DeGarmo's here. Oh, hi, Marty. Yeah, we've got quite a big following today, actually. Oh, that's cool. Uh, yeah, we're now up to 1,300 members. It seems like we're going up about 100 a day, which is great. Um, so keep your pictures coming. Keep watching. Keep sharing. Sharing is caring. Okay, let's run through today's wine. We're on this one called Al Bali. This is a Reserva. This is from the last bottle I had, remember? It was from the region of Valdepeñas in Spain. Uh, this is the same region, okay, which is basically midway, if you look at a map, midway between Granada and Madrid. This is a Tempranillo again, so I'm going to crack this open. You'll probably see these all over the place. It's quite a well-known one. It's another one we have here at Hidden Valley. I'm going to crack this open and get on the go for me and Jane. Andrew's here just to check. Um, hey Andrew. Ellen Finch is watching. Mark's mum, Daisy's mum. Hi, Hi Ellen, how are you? How are you? Um, Melanie Huggins, no Reuben today. We don't have a lot of the ingredients. See you Friday for the sticky chicken. Absolutely fine, yeah, Mel. No that's worries. Fine. And he'll probably want to do the chocolate pudding. I don't think we can do that next week. We seem to be getting so many menus in that we're just trying to stagger them through a little bit. Hi Helen. Hi Louise. Hi to your mum, Louise. I did see her. She was watching, but I just missed it. There you go. Cheers, everybody. One for myself and one for Jane behind the camera. Easy, Tiger. Cheers. Don't forget, it's all about socialising and enjoying your cooking. I always drink when I cook. I hope you guys do as well. Hi, Susie. Susie, you're back again. Nice to see you, honey. Okay, so I'm just going to run through uh, the ingredients that you're going to need today. Okay, for the two pâtés and also for the um, apple chutney that we're going to do on the side. So for the pepper pate, we've got a red pepper, a red onion, carrot, sun-dried tomatoes. Now I've got two sorts, you can just use the one, it doesn't really matter. This is a jarred sort that it, it comes in olive oil and also the dried sort that you'll see in a, in a packet. Chili, garlic and cream, butter. And for the... Um, for the chicken liver pate, we've obviously got chicken livers, chorizo, onion, olive oil, carrot, some bacon, uh, butter and cream. And you need a bit of spirit as well. I'm using brandy, but you can use any dark spirit, so rum or whiskey. You can also use port and sherry as well. Any of those, just for a bit of flavour at the end of it, okay, is a good thing to have. So we are going to start and then with the chicken liver pate. Okay. I this is easy, yeah. I mean, I've always it is so so, always so me easy. Off. Honestly, it's something I wouldn't attempt, but obviously I'm married to you, so I don't need to. If but you if you notice, guys, what I'm trying to do uh, with everything that I'm showing you how to cook is I'm trying to do it so that it all in one pan. Okay, so there's hardly any mess 
uh, at the end of it to wash up and it is so so simple and easy to do okay so with the two pâtés the first thing we're going to do is get the onions on the go in both of them okay bit of olive oil into the bottom of both the pans we're going to use an onion and a half for the chicken livers and an onion and a half for the uh, roast uh, pepper, the tomato and pepper uh, pate. I've got a red onion for the tomato and pepper and I'm going to use half a white and, and a red. The only reason I'm using that guys is to just give it a bit of colour. When you'll see it, you'll see when it comes out, it's a lovely, really good colour. So if you're having a dinner party, this is a great, great starter to do for any dinner party because you can pre-cook pre it either in the day before or even a couple of days before and it literally you're taking it out the fridge and you are putting it onto a plate. It's so, so easy to do uh, and it is something that your guests will love as well. So peel the onions. Jackie says hi, thanks for keeping her sane in between her mopping. I oh, know, oh, Jackie, so, Jackie, we I can't feel even come and help you, darling. We're not allowed out. We can't even come and help. For all you guys over there who are on some sort of lockdown, let me tell you what lockdown's like here. We're not even allowed out of our gate. We can only walk our dogs 50 metres. You can only have one dog each. You can only go to the supermarket one person at a time. Yeah. Uh, you can, you, it's a minimum spend of 30 euros. Yeah, you've got to spend 30 euros. You can't just pop in for a paper or anything, <laughs> loaf of bread and go again the next day. You've got to spend a minimum of 30 euros. It's really strict here. And, oh, we're on, I don't even know what day we're on now, to be honest. I don't know, what um, month is it even? I think, I think we're into what week we're on now because I've given up counting days. So we're into our third week now. CJ Jenkins is watching. Hello, CJ. Oh, hey, CJ. Long time, mate. Yeah. So into the first one, then, we're going to put one and a half onions. Because we're frying it off, uh, because we're going to, sorry, frying it off, uh, because we're going to uh, blitz it down at the end of it, we are only rough chopping the onions. These go into... Okay the pan, get the first one on, same with the red pepper and sun dried tomatoes, you see my camera wobble then, I was having a drink of wine, Ooh. something that red's not doing, I know, I just want to get these onions on first, uh, Neville Weaver, hi Neville. Oh, hi Neville. Nice to see you back. Yeah. So get those on the go first. Sizzling away. Next thing to do then is we're going to put a carrot into each one. These are actually a little bit too big, these, so I'm probably only going to use one and a half between the two. You hear that? That's our dog because he wants to come in the kitchen and he's not allowed. He loves carrots and he can hear me peeling carrots. Let me have a little bit and I'll give it to okay. him. Okay. I know he, he does. That's why. So, the top dog. and tail. Somebody asks me why you leave the top and the tail on while you peel it. The reason is, as you can see, you don't peel all the way to the uh, to the ends, so that when you cut them off. Is that a finger thing, like because you don't wanna? No, it's just because it, how it how the action works. So when you when you cut it off, you've then got a completely clean carrot. Right. So bit of carrot for the dog. Chuck that out there. Excellent. And for Finn as well, the two dogs. Ridiculous animals that like carrots for Christ's sake. <laughs> cut them in half. How is the woo CJ? How's the woo doing? Oh. God, we haven't been back to the woo for ages. Claire Vance, hi darling, how are you? So we're going to split down this into the two pots. Katie's watching, hi Katie. Katie's all things Avon, guys. Are you going to mention as well your sister, weren't you? Yeah, while well, Red's doing that, I mean, obviously we're all saying big shout outs at the minute for all the people that are working front line and 
everyone, all the key workers that matter, you know. And I just want to say um, two, a couple of shout outs. One, my sister works in a pharmacy. Go Joanne, you, bless you. She's been getting a bit of abuse. That's not on, guys. And also Emma, Simon's wife, Emma, my sister-in-law, she's obviously worked in the medical centre. So she's frontline as well. So big up for those guys. I know it's difficult at the minute. Nikki, uh, Nikki Thompson's watching. Hi, Nikki. Hi, Nikki. See you Friday night, Nikki. <laughs> yeah, Friday night. I don't know about you guys, but uh, with our friends, we we are having uh, Zoom calls on a Friday night. So we, we're all going out together with a Zoom call, which is quite fun. It's a good idea to do that. So then, uh, we've got both of the pots on the go. The next thing we're going to do is to the... Uh, chicken liver pate, we've got some bacon here, okay this is a whole bacon, if you've got slices of bacon, okay, either um, streaky or back, it doesn't really matter, and you need two slices of bacon, okay, two rashes. Hi Mary, Mary's watching, Hi, Jamie's Mary. mum, hi Mary, how are you? Lots of love from us too. Okay, so the equivalent of a couple of rashes of bacon, Never seen bacon like that. It's a whole, it's whole bacon, um, nice. and so we then cut this up. And this is going to go into your chicken liver pate. Of course, Debbie. All the sh shout out to anyone that's having to work right now. Yes. All the workers, truck drivers, delivery people, postmans, even you know everybody that's still having to go out there and basically putting themselves at a bit of risk really okay so that goes into there Let's just pop them back in here so this is your bacon and chicken liver one, yeah, yeah chicken liver one that one this one is the um vegetarian the vegetarian one Okay, garlic, two cloves of garlic are going to go into both of them. I know it's a bit of a multitask thing if you're going to go do both of them at the same time. If you're just doing one, obviously, you just follow how I'm doing it for the one, not the two. Thanks, Jenny. Jenny loves pate. She's enjoying the show. Yeah. Thanks, Jenny. It's so nice. Everybody's re been really positive. Yeah, don't and forget, guys, we are doing... Everything we're doing here is, A, to keep ourselves sane during lockdown, uh, but also to give you guys a bit of light entertainment and relief from the boredom, to give you something to look forward to. The more people we can share this with, the better it is for us. And the more fun it is for you guys as well within the community in the group uh, you know share your pictures of what you've produced listen give it a go that's the name of the game here is to give it a go and see if you can produce something you've never done before you know most people shy away from making pate because they think it's too hard but I can assure you it's super easy we're making, uh, Mateva, we're making two pâtés. One's a vegetarian one and one's a chicken liver. Okay, so into the pot go the garlic. So that one. Quick chop. Remember, this is all going to get blitzed down at the end of it. Remember to keep stirring them so it doesn't stick to the bottom. If it sticks a bit to the bottom, don't worry about it because... So maybe uh, you'll be better at stirring the pot than others, I hey, guess. Hey, hey. Here all week. Here all week. Okay. Um, if it does stick to the bottom a little bit, don't worry about it because that's when you, you add your brandy. And that's a, 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 a French term called deglazing. Okay, so... For instance, if you're making a roast dinner, you know when it's all stuck at the bottom, just drain off the fat off that, but keep all the goodness. If you either add a bit of water or any spirit to it, okay, and it will sizzle up, that is what you want to make your gravy out of it, because that is all the goodness there, right there. 
So if I can get in to these, I can start with... Scott Morris says hi. Oh, hey Scotty, how you doing mum? A few people in from the Wu today. Yeah, I know. So chicken livers, we are using half a kilo of chicken livers here. If you can open them. If I can them. open them, we will be using half a kilo. Okay, so I'm just going to take these out and put them onto the board. I don't want to put them onto the wooden board. Because it stains it, yeah? Yeah, because it will stain it. Now, when you get chicken livers, sometimes you get the hearts in as well. Okay, I don't use the hearts. Okay, you can do if you want to, but it's not important to. If you want to, if you want to, you can fry them off, use them for your dog. So once you've got them all out there, give it a quick chop. And I mean just a quick chop like this. Okay, and they go into. No, not that one. Not that one. They go into. <laughs> Could you buy the me one with buy? the bacon. <laughs> okay. So this is the chicken liver one? Yeah. If you're doing both at the same time, remember to clean your knife off. Okay, because it's had the livers onto it. So that then we are going to give it a stir. Put that into there. Change these over. Lovely. So to the pepper one. We're going to add the sun-dried tomatoes. He's not drinking much, is he, Andrew? Oh, bloody him tonight. Woo! Sorry, Andrew. I do apologise, mate. <clears throat> That's very nice. I have to say, though, the um, pata negra yesterday was, uh, the day before yesterday, was fantastic. So either one whole small... Um, red pepper or about two big slices of a big one chop all that up okay and that goes into the pot Andrew did I just remind you to remind red mm. come on Andrew okay and to that as well we're going to add the sun-dried tomatoes So you're looking to have, I suppose, about five or six sun-dried tomatoes. You want to keep a couple back just for the garnish right at the end. Again, chop it up. Okay, pop them in. Debbie says you're a great multitasker. Yes. Fancy a man multitasking. Fancy a man multitasking, I mean, come on. Now, this is an optional for both of them, okay? Rosemary Ashford. Kenya in the house. You're from Kenya? Wow. I'm going to put in to both of them a bit of chilli. You don't have to, um, but when I make my patty, I like to put a little bit of in it. And I'm also going to be putting some into the chutney at the end as well. We like our chillies, don't we? We like chillies. We're lucky that we can get fresh chilies right now. Yeah, we are lucky. So, cut the chilies into both. Hi, Kurz. Peter Miles is on. Hi, Kurz. Hey, Pete. Okay, the next bit then is we're going to put into both of these some butter. So, you want to have about a quarter of a block, quarter of a block of butter into each. So, cut it in half, then in half again. Keep that to one side because we'll need that later. Hi, Sean. Sean Horner's watching. Hey, Sean. Put the butter in. Into both. Rachel sent the recipe over, by the way. Okay, thanks, Rachel. This is a hit for us. We oh. love when we go to Rachel's for Christmas dinner. She, she always, always does, does chocolate bread and butter pudding. It is. Absolute... I'm not saying it's the main reason I turn up, Rachel, but it's one of them. It is amazing. East Africa is on lockdown also. Wow, whereabouts in Kenya are you? I, I was stationed over there um, back in the day. I was in Nairobi for a while and then we went to um, 
up country to Nanuki and Impala Farm back in the day, 1983. Oh my God. Gosh, that's a while ago, though. I know, isn't it? I can barely remember what I did last week. Okay, so give them a stir. And you're waiting for the butter to melt down, are you? Yeah, the butter will melt down, so you can just turn it down a little bit whilst we're doing that. The last thing then to put in... The trusted... The trusted vegetable cubes. Okay, we're only going to put in a quarter into each, okay, because it's actually got a lot of flavour on its own. So... You want a quarter into That's each. That's what I just said, Claire. Your Claire said, God, you can remember. He's always got had a good memory, hasn't he, Claire? He always sort of amazes us all. And we all sit there like a little bit like, what? <laughs> okay. I mean, let's be honest. I don't even know what date it is right now. So then, as you can see, that's sweating off nicely into both of them. I'm just going to pop the lid onto that. Liver one, yeah, this is a chicken liver one. Nice. As you can see, she's this in, is uh, so easy to do. Tea country. All oh, right, okay. Nice. It's an area I don't know much about, to be honest. Right then. Okay, so what we're going to do now, whilst those are bubbling down, I'm going to show you how to make a very easy, simple. Marta de Gama, is that like bouillon cubes? Yeah, yeah. Same, same, same thing. As you, as you notice, Marty, and everyone else who's watching, I only season at the end. And part of the reason I do that is because I use stock cubes. And the stock cubes are inherently quite salty. Okay, so cook it all off first. Remember, with seasoning, you can always add. Yeah. But you can't take it away. Unless you know some tricks, which I do. But on a general basis, you can only add seasoning, you can never take it away. So that's why I only do it right at the end. So for the... Um... It smells delicious, Claire. I can <laughs> tell you, it smells really sweet in here. It's lovely. So I'm now going to, if I can find it, yeah. I'm uh, going to make a very simple apple chutney. So to the apple chutney then, we're going to use one onion. So peel your onion up. Peel some onions, don't you? Onions, if you notice in cooking, onions get used a hell of a lot. John Mike Bailey's watching. Oh, is he? Hey, Joe. Another blast of the past from my army days. And aren't we getting some people yeah. that we haven't spoken to? Now, John, is, uh, his nickname's Spike, but uh, I was in the army with him back in the day in Germany. He's done a lot in his life to be honest Look, mainly with uh, cars and stuff but he's now got a fantastic company where he makes uh, basically road racing bikes uh, he's done a lot of work with the sky uh, team as well and uh, all the rest of it so, and he's just on a new project now making some fantastic road bikes so if any of you guys are into road racing on, on uh, cycle bikes put your name down and I'll put you in contact with John uh, it's a, a he fantastic says, what about, company. What about Sergeant Smesser Lasagna? <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, listen, I was I can always do a Sergeant Smesser Lasagna, no problem. <laughs> okay, so onion into the bottom. Trouble is, John, there's only two of us. <laughs> onion into the bottom and some olive oil, like so. That goes onto the heat. I'm just going to put this one over here. So not only was I multitasking with Two. Two. We've now got three on the go. To this then, we're going to add... Hi Terry, Terry's watching. Oh, hi Terry. Hi Michelle, Michelle's watching, who, from, um, who we met in Mexico. Oh, yeah. hi. Hi, I'm Claire Poick. Hi Claire. Excellent. The bit of carrot you had left over. Okay, we are going to chop this up. Now we want this quite fine. Because this is going to be on show for <laughs> yeah, the chutney. Basil came back yeah. with the carrot. Carrots on the go. He's seen it and He's he wants a bit it. of carrot. <laughs> That's so funny. Isn't it? <laughs> Doesn't even come near the kitchen until you get the carrots out. Yeah, give him a little bit of carrot. Look, there you go. Bit of carrot for the dog. 
We're then going to chop up the, um, the apple. Easiest way to do an apple is cut it in half and then come across one way, go flat and down. Okay, and then it takes the core out. Same again on the other side. Come across, flat, down. Okay, then we want to chop this up nice and fine. We eat a lot of it, Claire, not, not all of it. We eat a lot of it. We tend to have it for our tea or a lot of stuff you can freeze. Like, I think you can you freeze this? Both, of, the, both of these are great to freeze. So we freeze some of it down. Uh, obviously, we don't, oh, we can't eat everything, gosh. Oh Trouble no. is, we, can all, we can't, we'd love to donate a lot of it, but the problem we've got is we just can't leave the gate. So we did, um, a friend of ours the other day, we left some um, curry on the wall and they came and picked it up. <laughs> we text them and they came and uh, had a yeah, little takeaway on, on, on us, on us, because we just can't eat everything and, you know, why not just give it away. And we'll probably do the same with this pate as well. Yeah, you could send some up there, couldn't yeah. you? So, chop up all our one apple. As you can see, one apple actually goes quite a long way. Remember to give everything a mix up. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, it's steaming it's... up a bit. That's the chicken livers. I know. Sorry about that. Okay. I mean, I love his cheesecake, Claire, but I just can't eat four. I mean, one lasts me all week. Right, quick slow the wine. Anyway, guys, I hope you're enjoying yourselves wherever you are in the world on your lockdown. Cheers to you guys. Please stay safe. I think we're not over the worst yet. I think we've got a lot worse to come you know stay indoors okay protect your family and all the rest of it do as you're told do as you're told yeah okay have you seen my father on the tour no i haven't actually john redfern are you there although he did say he had a bit of trouble there do you know guys i think we could get more on but i think facebook could be in facebook and i think sometimes they're limiting to how many can watch so I think somebody drops off and then someone can get on. I think it's a little bit mean, but that sounds typical, really. Because they, I expect they want us to pay a premium package. Um, but, you know. Okay, so the other things that we're going to put into the uh, chutney, we're going to have brown sugar, some any dried fruit, it doesn't make any difference. Alex Fowler, chef in the house. Yeah, Another some chef. malt vinegar. And you want some spice, so you can either use one or two spice, mixed spice, or this baby, Chinese five spice. <laughs> you know the one that's always right at the back of your cupboard that you never use? According to Michael McIntyre. <laughs> <laughs> now, this, Great is sketch. A, this is the time to get Chinese five spice out, because oh, you can yeah, use that. Oh yeah, Dad's here. Hi, John. Oh, hi, John. Um, if you are using just straight mixed spice, You'll, you'll need, I haven't got it, that's why I'm using Chinese, uh, Chinese Spice Spice. You'll need one clove, and if you've got a star anise, perfect as well, okay? So. Oh, Claire um, Poic says, it, Facebook's playing up a bit. I agree with you because I can't get any notifications on my iPad. I can on my phone, but not on my iPad. <clears throat> okay, so if you can see in there, the juices are coming out, okay, and things are starting to happen a little bit on there. All the butter has gone in, so that'll be ready to blitz down in about five minutes. Just change my spoons over, okay. That smells lovely. Yeah, this is a really nice dish, this is, for a vegetarian pate. So we'll leave those two going like that. So once the onions have started browning off, which they nearly are now, we're then going to add to that the chopped apple. Oh, 
Oh dear. It's all down on the floor. Yeah, I oh know. So, two both of these then. Um, Louise Thornton, did you put some garlic into the chutney? No. No, not into the chutney. Not into the chutney, um, just into, into the pate. To both of the pates, we want to put some mixed herbs, about a teaspoon of mixed herbs into both. And some black pepper. Nigel Hayward's here. Hi, Nigel. Hi, Nigel. Okay, now to the uh, to the chutney, we need to put four tablespoons of. How long will this last sugar? in the fridge? Oh, was asking. for the, the chutney will last for a month easily. Four. tablespoons of brown sugar and four tablespoons of vinegar okay. and a good dash of the five spice like so if you've not if you're using the straight um, mixed spice this is when you would put in one or two cloves of garlic and you'd also put in your um, star anise if you notice I haven't put the dried fruit in yet and the reason for that is is because we're after now reducing this down okay to get the uh, liquid out of it now if you've added the uh, dry fruit to it now at this point okay you'd find that dry fruit would go quite hard because it's basically cooking in the um, the caramel which is what it will be at the end okay so we're just going to take the lids off these because we don't need the lids on anymore we are just about now ready. Just take that forward. Yeah. Okay. okay. Have you, if you notice, a lot of the liquid's gone out of the bottom there, and the same with this one. Just turn that down. Three pots on the go. I oh, know. I sense a lot of washing up coming here today, guys. <laughs> Not much at all. <laughs> So the next thing to do then is we're going to add some spirit of some sort. I'm going to use a bit of brandy to both of them. Like I said, you can use any dark spirit, so that'll be rum, whiskey, brandy, or in fact port or sherry. It doesn't really matter. And again, if you notice, we're putting this in right at the end, okay, so it doesn't cook out. And you're after about two tablespoons in each. Give them both a good mix. Lovely. Okay, we're going to turn those off now. <laughs> Claire Perk says, can you juggle too? I can. Oh, his talents are endless, Claire. I can juggle. You can juggle. Yeah. He can also play the harmonica. He's just found them. He lost them, you know. He lost his harmonicas for about two years. Two years. Told, tried to say I'd thrown them in the bin. Now it was very tempting at times, but I didn't. And he's found them. So we're going to put now some uh, either double cream or cooking cream into both. We're after again two good tablespoons into both. Okay. 
just a little bit more into that one. And give them a mix. This will feed, each one of these will do four starters, okay, so for, for four people. I didn't hide them hard, um, hard enough. <laughs> right, let me just have a quick drink and then we're going to blitz those down. Does it have to be spirit in the pate? Could you, if you... What else would you like to use? I don't know, like red wine? Uh, yeah, you can use red wine. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, Susie, so yes, oh, Susie, no, why? Why, Susie? Susie wants you to play the harmonica next time. <laughs> Not a chance. Oh, come on. You could like... He's, oh, do me. Cook to the cookhouse door boy is quite good, Susie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, next thing to do is... I'm going to show you then how to do it, make some Melbourne toast. Okay. Whilst that's all going. Melbourne toast is uh, a traditional toast that you have for pate. All you need is some toast again it's a good way of using up old um old uh, bread toast them off like i've done now you can do this and let them go cold cut off the outsides okay Like so, all the way around. Keep those for me, you don't want them. I'll have them for the chickens. Okay, well, they keep those for the chickens. I'll put, just put those over there for now. Okay, this is the other part that's a little bit tricky, so you need to mind your fingers when you're doing this. We need to cut these in half, okay? So, with your hand on the top, okay? With your knife, we're going to go all the way across. Okay. No excuse, Jamie, for not making something lovely for Nikki's birthday. Happy birthday to my lovely Nikki Myers. Yes, birthday. happy birthday, Nikki. It was her Nikki. birthday yesterday. She's yes. in the same situation as us, are our millions. Yeah, she... No business at the minute, no income, you know, blah, blah, blah. She treated herself by going to the bins today yeah. yes. on her birthday. <laughs> <laughs> took the kids out. Took the kids out to the bins. What a treat. Okay, so in half. And okay. Louisa Evans said you don't really see Melbourne toast much these days. No, you don't. And the, re the reason you don't see much of it anymore is, is basically because... Uh, there's so many companies uh, that make sort of similar. So once you've, uh, once you've done that, then you cut these into half again. I think Melba Toast is perfect with pate. I can never think of anything that goes better with it, to be honest. Well, I, I don't like it when you go to a restaurant and they give you a bread roll with it. I, don't, I mean, I, I'm not a major fan of um, Melbourne toast because it tends to break up whilst you're putting your pate on it. We'll leave that one out. Right? So, uh, and then you place them on a tray and they're going to go into the oven for literally about a minute or two. And we're after just drying them out. So I'm going to put those to one side now. Just clean up here. And let's have a look at how the... <clears throat> Chutney's coming along. It's pretty good to me. Need to break that down a little bit. Right, so we're now going to now do blitz up the two mm, pates. Okay, so we're going to go over to here now. Will Griffiths says hello uh, from good old Clibbery. Hey, Will. Come on, I'm going to have a drink now while Red does that. This is my time to have a little drink while he blitzes the so, pates. Blitz the pates up. Again, if you like a coarse pate, you don't blitz it up for too long. If you like a smooth pate, 
then you obviously blitz it for a lot longer. Barbie's in the house. Okay, so again, this is for the chicken little one. And you can see already it's getting a nice pate type consistency. <laughs> oh, Debbie Hughes says you're bringing Clibri together via Spain. Have a look. That's the whole idea. Yeah. Is that connection by connection cookery. Connection by cookery. People can say hello to people probably that they've not spoken to in years. A little bit like me and Red to be fair. Okay, so we're over to here then on these. So there's the, uh, the vegetarian one, and there's the chicken liver. Okay, so I'm just going to put them there like that. <laughs> so we need then, we've got chorizo and sun-dried tomatoes. Remember I said to put a couple of sun-dried tomatoes to one side. Okay, once it's blitzed up like this, we then want to add the chorizo and sun-dried tomatoes to each individual one. You only want about four, four or five sun-dried tomatoes. And we're after some very fine shreds, okay? Don't worry about if it's not really fine, it doesn't really matter. Again, be very careful of your fingers. Claire Todd, you used to make a really nice pate, I remember. Yes, she did. Okay. This vegetarian pate here is really, really nice, guys. It is such a, a winner for vegetarians. Into the pot, like so. We're then going to do the same now with chorizo. Again, you only need three or four slices. So. Again, we want slices. Factor Bites, that's the word I was looking for. Sorry, uh, Spike. Um, he, the name of his um, company for the bikes is called Fact, Factor Bikes, so have a look online for them. Are you spelling that? F A C T O R, Factor. Um, I don't know, I'm asking you to spell it. I know, exactly, I'm rubbish at spelling me. <laughs> okay, so chorizo, that's all done, into the pot. Okay, and then give both of them a stir. Make sure I've got the right ones. Yeah, that's that, that one. Okay, stir it all in. And the same with this. Look at the colour of that. Fantastic. Mm. Okay, and what's the last thing we always do? Taste. taste. Okay, so we're going to taste this one first. That needs a little bit of salt, not much. So we're gonna put in just a little sprinkle of salt into that one. Give it a good mix. Yep, that's a lot 
better. Cheers, everyone. Chin chin. <clears throat> Same with the liver pate. That doesn't need anything at all. Okay, so we're going to put these to one side now. you a couple of variations of how to what you can use uh, to keep them in okay so the next thing we're going to get ready chutney is nearly ready is on top of pate the traditional thing to do is to put clarified butter now clarified butter is basically butter that's been melted so that when butter melts there's three things that come out of it you've got uh, basically the salt and the minerals right at the bottom you've then got a liquid air, a liquid part which is normally the milk and uh, water and then you've got the top on the the oil on the top which is called um, ghee or clarified butter the easiest way to make it okay if you put it into a container that will go into the microwave put another butter into a container like so with a lid on it Okay, and then you pop that into a microwave for about a minute. Right, let's go back to the chutney. Now, the chutney, as you can see, the liquid's all just about coming out of it now. Okay, and it's starting to go a little bit sticky. This is the time that we add in any dried fruit. We're after about two, two tablespoons of dried fruit. In fact, more than that, actually. We'll do uh, one, two. So you can use any dried fruit you've got? Sultanas, raisins, yeah. anything will do. Even the, the, we put four of those in there. Give it all a mix. Okay. And then that goes into a container uh, you said into a container this then can be kept I suppose you could put it into a jar yeah you could put it into a jar anything you want to put it into let it go cold and then that can go into uh, the fridge and that will keep for absolutely ages hello Hanik Hanik's back Hanik Boomer's watching again oh, hi where are you from Hanik am I saying your name correct sorry Anika, it's a nice name. Okay, so what we're going to do now is just check on the clarified butter. Okay, cool. So that was one minute. Okay, if you leave that to settle out, it's just about done now. There's a little bit of the butter in the bottom. Okay, if you can just about see you've got a layer at the bottom if I leave that actually it'll clear down even more so we're after the oil that's on the top okay remember the um, no. Melba toast we're gonna to stick that into the oven and then I'm gonna now show you how to uh, what you can use to prep it up okay so you can either use a ramekin like so oh, all we need is some guests for dinner right I know leave a, leave a lip at the top because this is where your, your um, butter is going to go okay or you can use this is a shot glass actually you can use anything really everybody's got a shot glass or if you haven't you should have <laughs> yes <laughs> Emma Johnson's watching hi Emma Okay, so that's those. And for the vegetarian, again. Lovely colour that, isn't it?
a little bit more. There you go. Okay, so that's two of the ways to prep it up. If you want to store it into your um, into the freezer or just in your fridge, you can put it into a container that has a lid on it, and that will keep in your fridge for a good week, if not longer. And it can be frozen. Okay. Same with the red pepper. As you can see, there's actually quite a lot. Don't forget, I've done two pots already and all this. Okay. How long for that to set? This will set within six hours, uh, six hours easy. It just has to go cool, okay? So what you want to do now then is over the top of all of these you want to put your clarified butter. Okay, all you're doing is spooning over. And what this does is it makes a seal. Okay, it makes a seal for your pate and it will stay it'll keep in the fridge for absolutely ages. Hi Sarah, Sarah Grice is watching. Hi Sarah. Another frontliner, well done lovely. Okay, let's check on the Melba toast. There you go, that's ready. Okay, so we're going to put these to one side. We're now going to tray them up. Sorry about the dog, it's having a bit of a paddy at somebody. It won't be somebody, we've not seen anyone this for is two true. weeks. It won't be some... <laughs> be something. Okay, so I'm going to give you a few ideas here of how to tray up. As you can see, I've got some that I made earlier. Okay, so that's what they'll come out looking like. Mm, they look great. Yes, you can tell he's better now, can't you, Claire? He's better. Basil's better. Basil hasn't been very well, and now no. he's barking, so now we know he's obviously getting better. Yep, that's Basil. Yeah, that's Basil. So I've got some just uh, some biscuits, some normal um, crackers. cheese crackers, okay. And then you can just dress it up with lots of pieces of... The Melba toast, like so. Sneak a little bit on that one there. Okay. Also on top of the pâtés themselves, okay, you can add, just for a bit of decoration, you can maybe add a little bit of cherry tomato. Okay, onto each. Sarah, just follow the video, or you can um, go onto our YouTube channel as well and follow the video on there as well. Yeah, this will all be up on the YouTube channels, uh, or if you go to announcements in the group, that is where all the menus and all the videos are. You're most welcome, Ian. You're most welcome. It's been our Back pleasure in, it's our pleasure just to you know gives us something else to do shows red skills off and stops us killing each other so, okay so there you have it guys one more thing to do which i haven't done is the chutney i made some yesterday to show you how it sets okay as you can see mm. Now, whose guests wouldn't be impressed with that if you got that out for a, neat, a nice evening meal? You'd be impressed, right? So there you have it. We have a sun-dried tomato and red pepper pate for the vegetarians with an apple chutney. 
On this side we have a chicken liver pate with chorizo and apple chutney. To give you an idea of what it looks like when it comes out. Let's just uh, clean that. Mm. Okay, there you go guys. Thank you very, very much for watching once again. We hope to see you on Friday, which is one for the kids and you guys as well, which is a crispy chicken fingers, sticky crisp, crispy sticky chicken fingers uh, with a homemade coleslaw as well on the side. Lovely if you can tune in live. If you can't, grab the video that will be in announcements. Please help uh, spread the love by sharing this channel with your friends. In, again, in announcements, there is a link that you can share to your page to get as many people as possible to tune in, to give us a little bit of a respite from these crazy, crazy start times that we're in now. Anyway, my name's Red Redfern. The person behind the camera is Jane. Hello. Look forward to seeing you on Friday, and that's it from me. Bye for now. Bye.